Hello there. Welcome back to my channel, Snips by Kelly. I'm Kelly, and tonight I'm excited to continue on in our Memory Lane series. Tonight we're going to create layout number four in the series using the Memory Lane product bundle. Now I've reviewed all of the products in the product bundle in our first video in the Everyday Moment series that was our first layout using Memory Lane. So I'll link that in the description. We are going to add a little bit of vellum to tonight's layout, but let's do a quick recap. Last week we created a super simple background with paper strips that we color coordinated into color families. We did a little stenciling and I featured Gracie May, our granddaughter's senior photos. Then we did a house layout that featured Zachary Allen, our son's purchase of his new home with some watercolor wash techniques. Then Waylon James, our youngest grandson with a traditional grid design of him playing in a cardboard box. I'll link all those videos in the description if you want to watch those process videos. So here I have a picture where I'm rocking kind of the roll out of bed look. It is the morning after my son's wedding and Maya Jean, our granddaughter, is wearing her lucky cowgirl hat. And I remember thinking, how does she um, get by with that roll out of bed look with that cute cowboy hat and look so adorable? So I asked her if she had some more photos of her in her lucky cowgirl hat and she sent me these photos. She said her and her girlfriend were messing around taking some photos of her doing a little roping, doing a little posing on an old bridge, on some railroad tracks, and this was just um, our elevator in our town across from a shop where my husband keeps his semi-trucks and things like that, and I just thought they turned out so cute, but they're a little wonky because a couple of them are full color photo. One of them was black and white one of them is kind of super dark like um, not enough light in the photo and one of them looked a little bit sepia toned so what I did is I took all of the photos I put them in a photo editing program um, I happen to use PicMonkey but I also have used Canva before but whatever you use and I converted the photos to sepia tone I tried black and white but I really felt like that sepia tone with the colors and the patterns that we're going to use tonight really solved my problem. I didn't really want to give up the full color photos, um, but I did want all of the photos to look uniform and to look nice on the layout together. If I had used the original photos, I would have a couple that were color. I would have a couple that were black and white. I would have one that was sepia. And then the color photos would have showed like the color in the hat band and some other colors that would have made it a little bit more complicated. And I I love, love, love how this turned out and how by creating all of those in one color tone by using the photo editing program totally helped. I have the vision of putting these four photos together, probably trimming up that right photo and then having a focal, beautiful focal piece on the left hand side. So we have this great dragonfly in our stamp set, in the memory lane stamp set. So I went ahead and stamped the dragonfly on some vellum with a little bit of our archival black ink and then let it dry set it aside and let it dry stamped the um, dragonflies again on regular white cardstock scraps in regular intense black ink and now I'm going to take my all-purpose mat and my watercolor brush press a little bit of ballerina ink into the uh, all-purpose mat add a little water to that and we're actually going to watercolor on the back of the vellum. We're gonna do a little bit of prep work here. We're gonna get all of our bits taken care of and then we're going to have fun with all of our bits. And so I'm just taking that ballerina watercolor and very gently touching some of the circles on the dragonflies. And then I'm actually gonna show you also when I have the colors out and open, how I'm going to use the same technique on the flowers. So I've stamped the flowers from the stamp set on a variety of white daisy cardstock scraps. And then I'm going to color those with watercolor wash. We're gonna let those dry and then we're going to add a little bit of clear shimmer brush to those fussy cut those out so now I'm going to let that ballerina ink dry but I'm 
but because I have the Ballerina Ink watercolor wash out, I'm going to go ahead and color a couple of just the center, not the com the inner center, but the center around the inner center, if that makes sense. Here we go, of those flowers, and do that in Ballerina Ink. Now, the more water you have, the lighter it will be, but you don't want to get too much water because that will make your paper too wet, and then you'll have difficulty with it warping or um, not drying correctly, and it will have a little bit of a bend in it even after it dries, even when you don't use too much water, but you will be able to... Um, uh, use your adhesive or your foam tape when you're attaching that to your layout and it will be just great. So now I'm coming back in and using that same technique with sage ink and I'm actually coloring in or am I using honey butter? Nope, I'm using sage. So I'm doing some of the leaves in there and doing a little bit of the outer edges of one of the flowers and just adding that extra sage watercolor. And I'm going to do the same thing on the vellum bodies, the dragonfly bodies. And I'm going to add the, um, the sage color to the bodies. And then we'll come back in with the honey butter. And we'll add the honey butter to the flowers. And we'll add some honey butter to the dragonflies. Then we're going to have to set those dragonflies aside because the watercolor on the vellum is going to take longer to dry than it would on regular paper. We want the paper watercolor wash to dry as well but the vellum will take a little bit longer so we're going to set those aside and then we're actually going to finish those dragonflies in a next step down the road I've got way too much ink I don't need near this much so you can just press a little bit of ink with your ink pad add a little bit of water and a little tiny bit goes a long way you barely need to touch with the tip of your brush I'm using a medium water brush I could even be using a small water brush but I'm using a medium water brush and I'm barely touching in those centers just barely touching at all now um now I want to um, wipe that away and then grab the honey butter and repeat the process. And so, like I said, the ink that I used on this was way plenty. You had have plenty, plenty of ink to do this. Now I'm going to come back in and I'm going to do the same thing. And the majority of the flowers are going to be the honey butter. Um, I wanted to really bring out the yellow because as you'll see in a next step, I'm going to focus on that really beautiful beautiful yellow floral pattern, small yellow floral pattern in the Memory Lane collection. And I want to use that as a featured paper on this layout. So I'm so excited to scrapbook these photos of Maya Jean. Maya Jean is our feisty girl. She's feisty and she is our outdoorsy girl, uh, granddaughter, and she loves adventure and um, she loves the country. Um, and she, um, but she has a really, really big heart. She has a heart of gold and um, we just love her to death. But she is a middle daughter in her family. So she is the oldest son's middle daughter. They actually have four children, but three girls and she's in the middle. So not the youngest and not the oldest. And I really can relate to middle children. Um, I have another middle granddaughter, Hattie Elaine. And so I'll have to do a feature, uh, feature layout with Hattie as well well because you know how it is when you're the middle you're never going to be the oldest and be the first at everything and you're never going to be the little baby anymore right you're the middle so I love having a connection with middles with other middle children I'm a middle between two brothers as well so I'm coming in here with the honey butter and just adding that uh, and just adding a little tiny bit with my brush and it's such a quick and easy way to be able to color lots of flowers and barely have to do much touching um, at all. So you could do these flowers with um, uh, tri-blend markers. You could do the rubbing technique that we did on one of the first layouts in the series where we did um, rubbing with sponge daubers. You could do a little bit of blending with a blending brush. You could use colored pencils. So it's really all about your choice. These icons, these um, 
stamps stamp so beautifully. They would be um, beautiful no matter what method you use to color them. I've just opted to be able to use a variety of different techniques so you can see a variety of things and we can use those on these layouts. So now while those are drying, let's go ahead and pull out our paper pieces. So I really wanted to use that yellow. So I wanted to use 12 by 12 ballerina um, bases and I'm adding an 11 and 3 quarters by 11 and 3 quarters inch white daisy piece so that we can offset that yellow. So the yellow is going to be 3 by 11 and 3 quarters and we're going to have two of those and then we're going to add some strips. So this is going to be the base or the foundation underneath the photos and the circle. So I have a ballerina circle that I created on the Cricut that is eight and a half inches and then an interior circle that we're going to be doing some treatments on that is eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now we're going to add um, a zip strip, a couple zip strips, and then a pattern paper strip. So we have our zip strips that are one and a half inches, and I trim just a little bit off of the daisy zip strip and also the melon zip strip. <clears throat> so that they were 11 and three quarters of an inch long. And then we have the sage pattern paper that is a quarter of an inch by 11 and three quarters. So all three strips on both pages are at 11 and three quarters in length. And then of course the zip strips are always half inch and then we have a quarter of an inch in between. And I think that's gonna be a great pop of color in there and a great contrast against that really beautiful yellow background and I think the sepia is going to go perfectly with that and so much better than having all those random colors of photos. It bothers me to have some like black and white photos mixed in with colored photos and it may not bother you at all but I kind of like to have them uniform. Now I've created some Cricut bits so we have had some houses left over from the previous layout which of course I did link that in the description there were a few extra little leftover houses and then I created some sage little small sage leaves leaves and some a little small rosemary leaves and then here are how those watercolor wash flowers turned out after they dried I added some clear shimmer brush to those gently now I sped this portion up quite quite a bit because I seem to take an extra long time kind of trying to figure out the arrangements of these flowers. We're going to add some ballerina flourishes. I forgot to mention there's some ballerina flourishes in there and then also a black title. So I end up using only part of the title but I sped this part up because I'm struggling with the bottom. I know that my vision is to be able to curve those flowers around the bottom and then maybe have a little bit of an offset in that upper left corner but I'm not sure if I want the houses on the right or if I want the houses on the left. I do know that I'm going to do some treatments to that white daisy and I'm also probably going to add some paper strips um, and some elements of interest behind the photo. Maybe a photo mat, but for sure some paper strips for some elements of interest. So a lot of times when I put paper strips behind um, photo mats, then I need something in the lower left corner to sort of anchor all of that together. And so I'm not really sure where I'm going to put the bits yet, but I'm going to take a little bit of ballerina toffee and honey butter inks because those are the inks in the palette that we're using. And I want to do a little bit of blending with the blending brush around the edges so it's not such a stark white edge on the circle. So I'm just taking ballerina ink first and then I'm going to add some little splotches of the honey butter just to have a nice little honey butter hue a little further in from the edge and then I'm going to come back in with the toffee. Now the reason I'm going to come back in with the toffee is to tie into the sepia in the photos and it's going to give it a little bit more of an aged look and it's going to tie in with those sepia photos by adding in that 
um, that toffee color. But while I have the ballerina out, let's just take a little bit of that around the ballerina edge and give that just a little bit of tone on the edge again so it's not quite so sharp against the page. I did get a little tiny drop of ink on the center of that ballerina piece, but I'm not worried about it at all because it's going to be completely covered. I just need to remember to wipe my Versa mat. Sometimes I forget, or not my Versa mat, my all-purpose mat. Sometimes I get in a hurry and I forget to come back in with my stamp chamois or a baby wipe or a paper towel and wipe that off. It wipes so easily. I just need to remember to do that because sometimes I am a hazard and I get ink all over my hands and then it ends up all over the place. So now that I have the ballerina ink, I'm going to come in in the upper upper left of the circle and the lower right of the circle with a little bit of that honey butter to give a little bit of a glow around the little bits that I'm thinking we're going to add there. I think we're going to have a flower cluster up in the upper left and probably a flower ridge or a flower row or a flower cluster on the lower right. Okay, I am loving that so much better. The only thing that we need now is a little bit of that toffee ink to coordinate with that sepia tone. I just want to come in with the toffee ink on the edges just a little bit to be able to tie it all together. It gives it a little bit of an aged look or kind of dirties it up just a little bit and gives it that nice little bit of blending um, and it'll blend in with all of those photos uh, now that those photos are adjusted to the sepia tone. So I'm just kind of rubbing right over the top of the ballerina super lightly and just a little bit there on the edges and I'm ending up loving how that's looking. I think it's tying it all together really, really well. So I think next I'm going to do just a little bit of splattering on that circle as well. So maybe a little bit of ballerina ink and adding um, a little bit of watercolor to that and just splattering that while, while we have it out. But I'm checking it out here to see how that's going to look over there. And I have a little bit of work to do with all the bits, uh, but I think I'm going to love the way that that looks. Okay, so let's go ahead here and press that ballerina ink back down. It seems like we're kind of getting the inks um, uh, back out again and putting them away and getting them back out again. But sometimes I like to add just a little bit more here or there after I see how something looks. So we're going to add just a little bit of splatter in the upper left and the lower right over that honey butter. Now you could use a ballerina shimmer brush as well, but I figured since we were already using the inking techniques that we could just quickly and easily add this splatter. I'm not planning on adding splatter all over the layout, just on this this particular piece here. So now we can come back and check out our dragonflies. So they're all dry. We have the watercolor wash on the back and the front has the archival black ink on it and the watercolor wash is on the back. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to do a little bit of snipping, snip those uh, dragonflies and then grossly put them over. So I've used a little liquid glass and put just a couple drops on the center so that the leaves are are still loose and then I'm going to fussy cut those out so that that liquid glass is really literally like cement and it will hold the, those dragonflies together in the center and then I'll fussy cut those out off camera and we'll have those to use on the layout. So now we can begin putting some of the base pieces together and the photos on the layout and I know that I want the largest photo here on the left and I'm going to speed this section up quite a little bit because I end up taking a long time um, and I am struggling a little bit with the bits in figuring out exactly where I want them. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to center the circle and I actually put foam tape in between the white daisy circle and the ballerina circle so that I'm able to tuck some flowers in there if need be. 
and I don't know exactly the exact location that I want to put the flowers so let's just start playing. I'm going to start playing with a little bit and then walk away from it a little bit do a little arranging of the photos on the opposite side and um and kind of get a good little fit. Sometimes it looks a little funny when you begin to do flower arrangements and you, till you start to add more bits in the center. So when we start adding some of the ba ballerina flourishes, some of the sage and the rosemary leaves, it's gonna look a little bit clustered up there. It's gonna look a little bit thick, but we're gonna get there. We're gonna add these leaves and then I do end up um, adding a little bit of inking to those leaves um, by inking the edges with a little bit of sage ink. So even though I have rosemary leaves and sage leaves, I just add the sage ink to both of those and then I add a little bit of ballerina ink to the edges of those flourishes as well. And this is kind of a no pain, no gain situation. <laughs> So I love this part, but it is tedious sometimes to just keep playing with those bits until they look right. Sometimes they can look wonky until you add just the right piece or you um, lay the bits over or under. So I'm just playing, playing, playing as you'll see. And really sometimes you um, can arrange it in so many different ways that look pleasing. Like one person's arrangement and another person's arrangement can be completely different and still be gorgeous. So I would love to know um, how many of you have ever used sepia photos before or black and white photos before, or do you always use full color photos? Um, and I would also love to know some of your solutions in what you use when you have, say, a uh, five photo series but none of the photos jive that's happened to me before where I have photos that go in a series and I love each and every photo I love the subject in the photo um, but none of the co photos are coming together either I want to match those photos to a specific paper theme that isn't quite matching the photos or the photos within that theme just aren't quite jiving with each other so um, I would love to hear if you love the idea of making all of those photos black and white or making all of those photos sepia to just remove that color element from time to time. It's not something that I would do every time, but it definitely, I mean, I would love to hear what you think. I definitely think it solved my problem in this situation. All right, so now we're going to walk away from some of those bits and I'm going to pull out some of the remaining pattern paper. We still have some great pattern paper in our memory lane series so I'm just going to play with this a little bit I know I want two or three layers of paper underneath this and probably a zip strip as well so you could use four by six pieces or you could even just use strips that maybe are two by six um, just a little something to toggle and have a little bit of color on that left hand side so I'm loving the pink as the base I do love the stripe I think that would work great um, the sage I think is a little bit too bland I think we need a little bit of color in there the houses are a little bit too much and we're gonna have some house bits there I do really love the stripe um, I also love the concept of bringing in that melon again because we have a melon stripe in there already but the one that wins out the most is this wash paper. I really love the orange and the pink tones in the wash paper. It's really hard to decide between the stripe and the wash but the wash ends up winning out. I really really like that. So I'm going to use the pink pattern or the ballerina pattern as the base, then the wash pattern over the top. And I do think we need to bring in a little bit of a sage strip in there um, and add a transition. 
I try the pink, but the sage ends up winning out. There's plenty of sage in the flowers and in, in the other pieces that I think that's going to be a perfect combination. So I'm going to cut those um, and I end up cutting both of those at four by six. So I have a four by six of both of those patterns. And then of course, because zip strips are always a half inch, I have a half inch by six inch strip and I'm just going to toggle those so that they meet at the corner bottom and typically when I do this like I said before in the video you do need a little bit of an anchor on the bottom left or something that covers that transition strip it's not that it bothers me completely but I usually like to have something that covers up those bottom strips I actually try to do a sage photo mat um, and see if, uh, if I need that photo mat and I don't end up loving it as much as I do that watercolor wash strip uh, or watercolor wash paper. So that's what I end up going with. And I'm looking also at little different stickers and different pieces that may work as a good little anchor at the corner bottom. Um, and I may just end up going with flowers. So here's those um, dragonflies and how they turned out. So once the liquid glass was on the center of those dragonflies, I end up fussy cutting around them. Now, I only end up using one of those dragonflies, but I like that they're both prepped because I do have at least one more layout in this series that I'll be completing. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the Versa mat around and we'll do a little bit of inking on those leaves. Now most of those I'm going to ink off screen but I start by using the uh, the mini uh, uh, blending tool and actually um, the mini ink blending tool and I actually um, uh, start to um, rub those a little bit and try to ink those edges and then I end up just actually pouncing a little bit and just pressing into those and adding that little bit of color on the tips. I absolutely love that look so I'll finish those off camera. Then looking at that circle where I have the little bit of inking around the edges and the splatter, if you remember from the last video our paper strip layout that we completed with Gracie May's graduation photo um, senior photos we used this slim line um, stencil that had the diamond shapes in it and I thought since we've already used it in this series and we're going to be needing it and using it with the whole memory lane series we might as well add just a little bit to the end there so I've moved those photos out of the way I'm going to lay just a little bit of that stencil on a diagonal so that the diagonal of the stencil matches up with the paper strips and then I'm going to add lightly lightly ever so lightly Lightly, some sage ink and add yet another color there. We're just getting so many fun layers of texture in the background that it's going to look so pleasing to the eye and I love how it's going to peek under out from under those paper strips and then we're going to add some more dimension with the flowers and the other little bits. I like that. I'm happy with that. It looks great. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep, I love that. I think that's going to work great. I love using stencils and adding stencils to layouts. And sometimes less is more. Just a little bit works so great. So now I'm going to um, pull out the ballerina flourishes and um, pull off the tip and add a new tip to that um, a mini ink blending tool. And then I'm going to do a little bit of pouncing on those leaves and just add a nice little bit of contour color on the tips of those. It's a subtle thing, but it really does add a lot. And it takes just a couple minutes to do that. And it's so worth it. Yay, I'm so happy. <laughs> now we're at the fun part. Now we get to pull in all of our hard work and all of our little bits that we did all that work on and we just get to do arranging. So I originally take Beautiful Moments, which is in black cardstock and it is from the Cricut. And I'm thinking that I want to arrange the title up at the top. And then I end up wanting to use one of the stickers that actually 
that says live in the moment. And I thought having beautiful moments and live in the moment was a little bit too much. So I do end up taking moments away and just using the beautiful title. So I'm arranging the houses there and just like in the last layout, I decided that those houses needed a little bit of white in the background. So I do just end up taking white scraps, backing the houses with white scraps and then um, covering up like the windows and making sure that white is showing through instead of patterns. So originally, because I needed something on that transition, I thought about using living in the moment. And so then I thought maybe if I use living in the moment down in that corner that I would use beautiful up in the upper right. But I actually end up moving that um, live in the moment sticker over to the right page. So here's kind of where I sped up the video because I'm struggling a little bit. I don't know if you can call it struggling. I'm playing a little bit too long. So I'm messing around with it and not quite getting the fit that I want. It's not quite working the way that I want it to work. So I'm going to keep working with it. And I end up tucking some of those flowers underneath the ridge. So I told you that I have foam tape between the white daisy piece and the ballerina piece. So I'm toggling some of them under, some of them over, and I end up just working with it, working with it, working with it until it has this great curve. And it's not going to look right until we start to add the flourishes. Once we add the flourishes, it starts to come together. I actually even try to rotate the house and I don't like that as much as both of the houses on the left hand side, but I need something that's stretches out a little bit farther and gives um, a little bit more of a look so it's not all clustered together. So I end up using those ballerina flourishes and some of the sage and the rosemary leaves and that ends up working great. But bear with me here. It takes me a minute to get that to work out and so I actually decide to rotate over to the right page and speed things up a little faster when I'm in doubt, when I'm struggling and I can't get the look that I'm going for. Um, I typically move on to another section. I just leave everything lay right where it is and then I come back to it and it always never fails. It just comes together. I just keep playing, moving things around until all of a sudden the, the aha moment comes um, and it just seems to work out. So I'm layering that. I really love living in the moment. I love that saying because that's totally Maya Jean. She loves to live in the moment. She's very spontaneous. Um, she's fun loving. And I love these pictures of her that just show that. So that picture in the lower left, she actually has her rope and she's, uh, um, the rope is above her head and she's um, um, moving her rope around. And then we have quite a few old little bridges. We have some old railroad tracks. And then in the one photo, you can see our elevator, our green elevators in the background um, of the shop. And she's just messing around on the dirt road and I love that. Lots of fun in my lifetime have, has happened on an old dirt road. I love everyday fun like that. So now I'm working a little bit on the leaf flourishes. I'll be using some foam tape and popping up some of those flowers and tucking some under, popping some up, which is just standard, you know, to give yourself dimension. Some people love, love, love foam tape. I love, love, love foam tape. Some people like all of their... Um, layouts one dimensional and so um, you can probably do a lot less layering if you like them one dimensional and just toggle those and you don't have to use foam tape so our page protectors are amazing um, and I'm not just saying that because I love close to my heart but it's because I have tried many many brands of page protectors our page protectors are the most sturdy page protectors I've ever tried and I've tried many and I have never had difficulty with our regular regular
regular foam tape fitting in our page protectors. And sometimes I've even double foam taped um, and I never have any trouble because they are expandable and um, I don't mind that um, bulk. Now, hard buttons or things like that, I don't always double stack or do anything like that, but a soft sticker with some soft foam tape doesn't bother my page protector at all. Okay, so now you can see that I've added the white daisy on the back of those houses and I'm still going, still playing. Um, some of these over the top layouts like that that have so many flowers and flourishes in them, they just take a minute. They definitely do. So um, hopefully you have your comfy pants on and your music that you love in the background and you're just playing. Now I do do chapters in my videos, so feel free to fast forward. Um, you can can fast forward some of this part these parts and fast forward to the next chapter um, if it's getting a little bit long for you but it just takes me a minute to work it out and I'm super happy I took the time to do it because I end up being really happy with it I end up finding a little bit of a way to make a more of a curve and then it's gonna mesh here once I add some of the leaf bits and um, it's gonna totally work and I actually add the dragonfly over to the left side up above the houses which fits perfectly and it still shows the splatter and it still shows shows the stenciling and it totally comes together awesome awesome I hope you guys are loving this series I have a couple more little ideas in my head rattling around for maybe the last layout maybe I can eke out two more layouts with this series but for sure one more I have quite a bit of awesome pattern paper left so most of you who follow close to my heart know that our um, our specials usually have extra large pattern paper packs in them. Our regular pattern paper packs have um, two sheets each of two sided patterns. So, um, so you get six papers all together and it's two sheets each of each um, of each pattern and they're double sided. And so in our specials, we typically get 10. So instead of six sheets, you typically get 10 sheets. And I love that. And it gives us so much extra pattern paper and makes it so much easier to stretch. So hooray, you're seeing it starting to mold. It's starting to finally come together. It takes a minute to just get your layers the way that you want them. And I love that curvature now to the bottom. It totally works with the flourishes coming out. I needed that distance just a little bit coming out more toward the right. Now I'm going to come up to that lower left and I'm going to do the same thing and get that sort of situated and then I'll anchor those all in place. I did when I did the beautiful title. The beautiful title on the Cricut is just a straight word. So I did curve it a little bit. I put liquid Tombow on it and then curved it a little bit around the curb. You've got a little bit of give in the cardstock, so you don't want to bend it, but um, you can curve that pretty easily. And then I made sure that the bottom part of the F was overlapping the circle just, just to kind of make things connect and make them look a little bit cohesive. So woohoo, it's coming together. All of our work is paying off here. So a lot of times I like the flourishes to curve, um, but this in the upper, it needs a little bit of the flourish to come a little bit upward and then a little bit over toward the beautiful, just to do a little bit of space filling there and make it look a little bit more like a natural flourish. It's coming out so pretty. I love it. I love that we've used primarily the yellows and the sage it's just so gorgeous and the little pops of pink um really really help i love the dragonfly with the vellum on the top um, i do entertain the idea of using the second dragonfly but i think we'll reserve that maybe we'll need him on that last layout i think less is more with the dragonfly i think one is enough and so now i'm just coming in and trying to make a little bit of a longer flourish here with these leaf bits 
and adding those flowers in there. And then, of course, on the last three layouts, we grabbed our heart stamp. I didn't use any bling in any of these layouts. So we have four of them, four layouts. This is the fourth layout in the series. And I haven't used any bling or gems. I simply used the heart stamp, the tiniest heart stamp from the stamp set. So we'll be doing that as well. And we'll be adding some little heart stamps with some sage and some ballerina and some honey butter to do the decorating. So I like to decorate with gems a lot. I also like to use stickles and make dots out of stickles. Um, and I like to decorate with smaller stamps and what I call foofs, little asterisks or little stars or little hearts. Okay, what do you guys think? think. Are you getting happy? I'm getting happier. Usually when I'm getting happy, that means I'm getting closer and closer and closer to the end. We have a little ways to go yet. We have a few little more pieces. I want to add journaling and I'm going to, I think, add the journaling in the upper left and the lower right of the right page on an angle and work my story backwards. So I'll probably write my story or my journaling out in paragraph form on our sticker journaling strips. And then I will add those to the corner corners and I will go ahead and do that on camera just so that you can see how I snip those pieces together. But I'm getting happy, happy. Whenever I'm getting happy, that means it's time to go back to the sticker sheet and just double check the sticker sheet, see if there's any round elements or other elements that I can add from the sticker sheet and then go back in and add that journaling. Hooray! All right. If you're a diehard and you've hung with me, I'm so happy and thank you for sharing this time with me. While I have a moment while I'm looking at the sticker sheets, won't you take a moment to hit subscribe, like and follow and shoot me a comment. It really, really goes a long way on YouTube and it also helps for me to hear from you because it motivates me to keep going. It motivates me if I know that I'm giving you useful things. If you're finding the videos entertaining or useful, then I know that it's something that I want to continue to do and to continue to share. I love sharing the love of paper crafting with all of you. All right, so adding a few little circle stickers in a couple different spots just to add a little bit more interest, a little bit more texture. We have a lot of texture going on here. We have a splatter. We have ink rubbing and blending. We have um, stenciling. We have layers of thin cuts. We have some dimensional stickers. We have, gosh, we have great, great texture and dimension in this. So here I've written my story talking about how Maya Jean is our fiery, feisty, outdoorsy granddaughter with the big, beautiful, uh, loving heart. And I love her beautiful photos here. She is 16 already. She is just growing into a beautiful young woman and probably that would embarrass her to hear. <laughs> I doubt she probably follows my crafting channel, so I'm probably pretty safe to brag, brag, brag about her. She is creative and she is crafty, but Gracie May, her older sister, was really the more, um, more indoorsy, crafty. She loved camping and things like that, but she also loved puttering inside and baking and crafting and canning and making jam. And so Gracie May and I did a lot of that stuff. And Maya Jean, especially when she was younger she would do a little bit of crafting and then go run outside for a little while and then she'd come back in and she'd do a little bit of crafting and then she'd run outside and do she'd always eventually finish her project she just wouldn't do massive projects like like Gracie would because she needed that little burst of outdoor energy um she loved the loves the four-wheeler and loves riding horse and loves riding in rangers and doing outdoorsy things and I have some great photos of her uh, snowmobiling with grandpa and doing lots of things like that so as you can see I worked backwards in my story so I started at the end and worked backwards so that if I start at the beginning you don't always know where your strips are going to end so if you start at the end and build up to the top you know that you're going to have um 
the, you're going to finish in the right spot because you'll be able to snip. And if there's a few little spaces, don't worry, I'm going to fill those in with the heart stamp and it's going to work out perfectly. Super, super excited to be able to get this journaling in place and tell the story. The story is the most important part. So even though I'm scrapbooking, um, a lot of grandchildren lately because that's what's going on in my life right now. Um, the journaling is some of the most favorite part that my children love. They love to go back and read what I wrote about them and the stories that I told about them. And sometimes I look at my older scrapbooks and I cringe and I think, oh my gosh, in the early years it was like slap a picture on and slap a sticker on and then you were good. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. I am um, so tempted sometimes to go back and re-scrap some of those because our technology has changed so much and our style has changed so much, but I absolutely refuse because that is actually a story in itself, the way that our scrapbooks looked. I remember when I got some little blades and some shapes and it was the first time I was able to make shapes on my pages and I thought it was the, the best thing since Wonder Bread. It was just amazing to be able to do and look at us now. Look at all of the techniques that we're using and it's so amazing to keep hold of the history of where scrapbooking began and who knows where it's going to lead and where it's going to be tomorrow or the next day or next year. And I love that these books will be around forever with these stories and with the trends and what was popular in scrapbooking at the time for all of my children and my grandchildren to see. So I always say, here's the part. I'm getting happy. I'm getting really happy. That means we are to the end. We did it. All right. I hope that you've hit that subscribe button so you you are going to get the notifications um, and the, the follow button so you'll get the notifications for the next layout in the Memory Lane series. Don't you just love it? I just love Memory Lane and every single thing about it. So I hope you are going to scrap along and I'm looking forward to the next video that will be coming out soon to either finish the series or be the fifth layout in the series. Happy scrapping everyone and here's to you. Miss Maya Jean, our little cowgirl. See you soon. Bye-bye.